Okay. Hello. What just happened? I don't know. Did you? Did something happen? I, it's like the the there was there's a little bit of white noise in the background, and then all of a sudden it just went silent. Okay. Let's see. It is any. No, I'm going to do the same thing I did. I just did it again. Okay. Like cut out for a second. Oh, it's, oh basically, you're hearing my, uh, my mic up, and I got that you know, dehumidifier oh, okay. running. So oh, tell me if it's oh, bad. Okay. okay. All, right, all right. But I can't hear you. Right. It's, uh, it's, just, it's just the humidifier. Okay. Right. Yeah. All right. We're good then. <clears throat> cool. We're rolling? Okay. <laughs> all right. Welcome. This is the Genesee County Compassion Club Show. I'm your host, Jeremy. Glad to be back here in the studio. It is October or something or other. 16th. 16th. Thank you, John. <laughs> it's, it's up on the banner here, so. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Not yeah. at all. <laughs> well, I know, but they can see. I'm joking. I'm just giving John a hard time. I'm back here in the studio at All Points TV. Thanks for being with me today. And uh, thank you, John, for making it out in the nasty weather, making it happen here at All Points TV. It's been a good week. How's everybody doing? Uh, we definitely got some fall, autumn weather here. The, the warmth has <laughs> passed us on by. And uh, it's harvest season. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do. Yes, you do. Uh, but let's get into the announcements. I've got some stuff I want to share with you guys this week, let you know what's been happening down at the Genesee County Compassion Club, and uh, get you guys up to date on everything. Hopefully, you can check off your calendars, get them out right now, make your notes. Let's get to it. All right, we got our first, uh, first coming up here, I want to say, is the soup kitchen. All right, we got a soup kitchen coming up. It's the third Tuesday of every month. Going to be serving lunch. And uh, down at the North End Charities on Stewart Street, Mr. Matt will be cooking it up. Uh, definitely appreciate all your volunteers' help. If you guys could chip in this coming Tuesday, we definitely appreciate it. And I'd like to see you down there. All right. Uh, next big thing that we got coming up here is the Trunk or Treat. And we're super excited about this. This is going to be, uh, of course, in our parking lot, October 27th, which is a Sunday. It's open to the public. Dress up your vehicles. Dress up yourself. Bring lots of candy. And let's have a great time. Hopefully it'll be an uh, awesome time for us to get out there in the community. And hopefully we'll have a good turnout. It's uh, set up at 3 o'clock. You can check out our Facebook post at Genesee County Compassion Club. And uh, again, it's from 4 to 6 p.m. So it should be a nice evening out there. We have a prize for the best decorated. Hopefully Matt won't give it to himself. Just saying. <laughs> but uh, no, hopefully we'll see all of you guys out there. Hopefully this will be a big event. We had a great time last year. And we're looking to make it even bigger this year. I know mess, Mr. Matt has got a load of candy from the uh, North End Soup Kitchen. John down there has been hooking us up. And I know all you members out there have been collecting candy like crazy. So let's get busy and let's get out that sugar high. All right, October 27th. And then, of course, for you guys at the G, we have our Halloween party on Halloween. And uh, this is going to be a kicking party. We've got all kinds of stuff uh, planned. I'm trying to pull it up here on Facebook for you. But uh, it's definitely a day you do not want to miss. It is free for all members. There's no additional charge. We're going to have all kinds of different special games and prizes and fun things going on throughout the day. Of course, you know, we've got the club festivities going on. Make sure you can make it down to the club on Thursday, Halloween. If you're a member, we definitely want to see you there. It's a great time to stop by, visit all your friends, and have a blast. All right, so don't forget that. It's going to be good times. Uh, let's get into the news. We've got a number of different things I want to share with you guys today. And uh, before I get going too far, I want to make my own public service announcement. See these Arizona teas here, uh, which I am not sponsored by. But I do want to point out that when you're in the grocery store or at the gas station, there's Arizona teas, which you can see there's a price right on the can. You all know about that, 99 cents. And there's these other teas right next to it called Peace Teas. All right. Now, I like to refer to, refer to those as imposter teas. Made by Coca-Cola, no less. And they are $1.69, if not worse. So don't be fooled, folks. Make sure you get the true Arizonas out there and uh, screw the peace teas. My, you know, my, cor my corgi that I just, you know, lost um, in you know, March. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. She loved uh, Arizona iced tea, the, the, yeah. the ras the, um, le with lemon. Oh, yeah? I crack open a can of that. I'd have to pour some into a bowl. She ended up drinking better than a half of the can. She just had this fondness for tea. I mean, there's a, I mean, the people just crack up when I used to crack, you know, walking around, and I'd have to pour it in my hand while I was walking around in the neighborhood and let her drink. And then I started creating a small collapsible bowl. But she just loved Arizona iced tea. Yeah, man, Arizona's good stuff. So, yeah, I just, I thought that peace tea was like, you know, an Arizona, and then I finally figured out that, no, it's not even the same damn company. But 
All right, anyways, back to marijuana. <laughs> My little uh, rant for the week. Um, I got some news I do want to share with you guys. I got a lot of different things that have been going on here in Michigan and a lot of fun stuff. I know we've got a lot of different events. Of course, we just had, uh, what was it, the uh, Croptober out at the Auto City Speedway. I know you guys had a lot of good times out there. I heard it was an awesome event. And, um, of course, we've got a lot of more things coming up throughout the year here. But, um, excuse me, as far as in the news goes and uh, as, as to what's been going on in the community, it's definitely harvest time. Uh, I know I've mentioned this on the last few podcasts, and this is one of those things where, yeah, it's, it's, it goes on for more than a day or two. And, uh, of course, there's people out there that are, uh, you know, I'm referring to outdoor, of course, but we've got the recreational crops coming down. We've got, uh, for the first time in Michigan, so that's a pretty special thing. Uh, so for all of you people out there that took advantage of Michigan's law that weren't able to grow cannabis before, this is your first harvest. So it's pretty exciting. Uh, and I've talked to uh, quite a few people out there that have just harvested their first cannabis this year uh, because of that, and they're enjoying it right now. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I think that's awesome, actually. So congratulations to Michiganders. You know what I mean? That's a little taste of freedom right there, and you should give yourself a pat on the back. You're an official pot consumer, grower. It's just it's, it's a cool thing. Ten years ago, we'd have been, we were all still hoping for it, right? So... Definitely cool stuff. Definitely harvest time. Um, if you haven't got your stuff in now, you're probably in a greenhouse or something like that. Or at least you should be with the cold temps coming. I think we had our first frost here just two days ago. So uh, it's definitely that time of year. But um, getting into some of the details here, the, the other first that we've had this year, and I guess actually it's not a first, but it, in a ways, in ways, it is a first. And I'm referring to Michigan's agricultural hemp production and harvest this year. So uh, that is an interesting fact. Uh, and we had that prior. There's been actually a few farmers in Michigan that have been growing industrial hemp now. I, I can think of off the top of my head, I know Joe Brown. I don't know him personally, but I know he has uh, been one of Michigan's licensed hemp producers for quite some time now, I do believe. But uh, with the change in the law, we've now seen a large amount of people jumping in on, as you will, on the bandwagon of industrial hemp. So I want to share some information with you on this because I thought some of the numbers were pretty amazing. And, uh, you know, obviously there's some questions to this, and I, I mean, maybe some of you have some answers that I don't, but uh, we'll get into that in a minute. But as far as the history goes, I mean, hemp has been used for all kinds of different things, and I don't think I really need to elaborate on all the different uses that hemp is being used for. Um, one of the big things right now, obviously, that most people are now becoming aware of and starting to use in mainstream are CBD products. And uh, a lot of these CBD products are being produced from hemp as it doesn't naturally contain THC, or if it does, it's a very small amount. But uh, a lot of the production has been for that purpose, and uh, it's certainly a growing industry. Um, says here on the article that uh, more than 78,000 acres of hemp were planted across the U.S. in 2018. Uh, Two-thirds of that were in Colorado and Montana. The average nationally soared this year to more than 511,000 acres uh, in 2019 after that bill passed. In Michigan, uh, through the Department of Agriculture and Development, Michigan has processed 541 grower registrations, which covers in Michigan 32,243 acres uh, and another 389 handler, processor handler licenses. So um, this is a part of Michigan's hemp program. I think it's pretty spectacular. It is a, a definitely growing program. Look at that, 541 growers, 32,243 acres across Michigan that were planted with industrial hemp. And uh, it's pretty exciting. So these guys are busy out there harvesting. The article that I'm reading here is from, uh, let's see here, if I can share this with you. It's by Charles Crum at uh, medianewsgroup.com. You can check that out. But uh, good article. Mentions this information that I just shared with you and uh, goes on to talk about it. Most of these farmers, from what I'm reading, are doing it the uh, old-fashioned way, if you will. Planting by hand, harvesting by hand. Uh, drying, you know, in barns and, and hanging up processing type. There may be other ways involved, but this is the majority of what I've seen currently. And uh, 
I mean, it's the beginning of an industry here in Michigan. It's it's an industry that's well advanced in other areas, especially in other countries. But here in our state, it's brand new, and uh, it's exciting to see this happening. Some of the other information I thought that was interesting is their uh, the numbers, and I guess when you when you think about it, thirty two thousand acres, that's a lot. That's a lot of product. You know, it's a lot of hemp. Um, I guess. Uh, let me pull I must have clicked the wrong thing. Hold on. I'm sorry. This article here, it goes on to state that uh, they may, or as far as for their prices goes, I'm trying to find it here. It keeps moving around on me. $400 a pound for the flowering tops of the plants and $30 a pound for the leaves and stalks. Uh, at least that's what this gentleman here who is growing estimates. Uh, estimates that's, that, that's what he thinks the market price is for his product. Um, if it is, I, I don't know. I honestly don't have any personal information on this. Um, but at any rate, obviously a pretty profitable crop if he's able to, to fetch that amount. Uh, he, him, this guy here, his name's Ruggles, estimates that he might yield 10,000 pounds of plants. Well, at $400 a pound, that's pretty damn good yield. Holy smokes. Um, I guess we'll have to see if that's going to be the case or not. Again, he's estimating. So I don't have much more information. And like I began to state before I got started here is that a lot of the product here that I've seen is being used for CBD type products. Obviously, hemp can be used for all types of different production materials, uh, biomass, you name it. And there's different types of hemp that are produced for those purposes. So the questions here around the industry that the articles aren't really addressing that I'd like to know is what type of varieties are the majority that are being harvested? What is the primary use of these products that they're being used for? And who's buying it? Uh, where's it going? How's this working? And a lot of these articles, a lot of these people aren't really alluding to how this is working. I'll be interested to follow this and any information I can get, I'll be glad to share with you guys. But uh, at $400 a pound, um, for flower tops, uh, whatever that particular means in their industry. We know what it means in the medical marijuana industry, but in hemp, obviously, it's probably something different. But at any rate, that's what they're talking about, and uh, that's a pretty amazing number. I mean, I'm sure a lot of other farmers in Michigan would be very interested to see how they could come up with numbers like that. Um, so at any rate, good, good for them. Congratulations to the people that were pioneers, if you will, that went out and put the seeds in and, and did the hard work. And they're probably really still getting their hands clean from their harvest at this point, if they're not still working with it. But at any rate, it's probably well-deserved and uh, it's good to see this growing, literally. All right. So moving on here, I got some other stuff I want to share with you guys. <clears throat> I thought this was funny. I, I wanted to share with you. Do you guys know that uh, Snoop Dogg has officially hired his own blunt roller? Yeah, no, no kidding. His own blunt roller. It says in here, the guy he hired, uh, forty to fifty thousand bucks a year is his salary. Uh, he has to follow and travel along with Snoop Dogg. Got to be at his, you know, beck and call, if you will, any time of day, supposedly. Uh, and in another article, Snoop Dogg was saying that he might smoke as many as eighty joints a day, or eighty blunts, excuse me. A day, or maybe it was 50, I don't know. But whatever number it was, it's a lot. So this gentleman here is a very busy man. <laughs> and uh, he got what some people might consider to be a dream job, being Snoop Dogg's blunt roller. Uh, so I thought it was cool. I just wanted to tell you guys about it. 40 to 50 grand a year to roll blunts. Pretty cool. All right. Um, did you guys hear about CanTrust? CanTrust is a uh, company in Canada. Go figure, right? I, I, where do they get these names from? I mean, do they, don't they realize that when you put this together or sound, you know, say it a little bit too quickly? Yeah, I just like, yeah. <laughs> can't trust. <laughs> yeah, trust. Can't trust. <laughs> and ironically, they are busted. You can't trust them. This is too funny. I don't make this stuff up. Um, oh shit! I just closed the wrong window. <laughs> All right, but anyways, I, I remember the story. <laughs> anyways, these guys—they're licensed in Canada to grow marijuana. They grew way too much. All right. Um, let me try to get back to this article here because this is really kind of funny. Um, 
Yeah, fifty-eight million dollars of of cannabis is what they're saying that they have to destroy because they grew whoops too much. So can trust, you can't trust them. They made a whoopsie, and uh, seventy-seven million dollars, or I guess that's Canadian dollars, fifty-eight million dollars in U.S. worth of product. They got to destroy it. Um, you know, if they would ship that here to Flint, I'm sure we could destroy it for them. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that people here, I actually, we always been friends with the Canadian people, and I know a lot of people here are willing to make sure they can alleviate that situation. Well, it, it, for don't them, they, yeah. doesn't Canada already send their garbage here? Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. So, I'll be waiting for the truck. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, I, th I think we're being, we got generous people here willing to help them all. I yeah, mean, yeah, definitely. Uh, anyways, yeah, they were busted. They had way too much in inventory. In addition to that, they had also grown too much. Uh, Health Canada, which is the governing body of their marijuana program in Canada, uh, basically slapping them on the hand, telling them no, no, no. Uh, says, and then of course their CEO he comes out and says, well, Can Trust is confident that its detailed remediation plan will not only address all of the compliance issues identified by Health Canada, but it will also build a best-in-class compliance environment for the future. Well, I'm sure it will, Robert Markovich. That's the CEO of this company. Um, anyways, yeah, busted, grew too much. Whoopsie! They were not authorized by their license and uh, apparently grew way too much weed, and now they're having to destroy $58 million worth of cannabis. All right, um, yeah. And, oh, yeah, speaking of other companies that uh, recently got in trouble, we mentioned Iron Labs, or I mentioned Iron Labs, uh, a few weeks ago, they were busted, unfortunately, here in Michigan. They're one of the testing facilities for medical marijuana. Uh, they said basically they had test results that didn't match up, Sc unscrupulous testing results. Uh, the bottom line, you want to know what it is? Money. They're fining Iron Labs $100,000 and telling them don't do it again, basically. Get it right. Do it right from now on. Don't do it again. Give us $100,000. Um, yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all. I, I think it's absolutely ridiculous. I, I'm not, I don't know that Iron Labs is deserving of that. Uh, I don't, the fee to me is just, it's as bad as the NFL, you know, when they just arbitrarily hand out fines for whatever they deem is unnecessary or, or wrong. Um, you know, how is the, this hundred thousand dollar figure determined? How will the fines be used? Who made that decision? Um, all of these things. I mean, and, and how does that really prevent this type of error in the future? Now, of course, if you go on, they talk about all the different things they're going to put in place to ensure this doesn't happen and blah, 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 blah. But, you know, really, to me, it just looks like a, a, a money grab. Now, I don't know if that's the case or not. I don't know how erroneous these lab tests were. Um I do know one thing. I have not heard of anybody, any patients, um, you know, going to going to the hospital because they got bad meds. Or uh, I have heard of patients, of course, complaining that you know the meds didn't work. That could certainly be a result of this. You know, they had a test result, thought they were going to get a good product, used it, found out didn't work as well. Thought, hmm, maybe that you know cannabis strain isn't really for me. Not knowing the test results weren't accurate. But at any rate, $100,000 fine is what they got nailed with. They're going to pay it, of course. They're going to move on. There's not very many testing facilities in Michigan. Uh, there's a scramble right now in the industry to open more. Uh, and, um, you know, that, that's, that's where this is at. There's a big emphasis by the state on these testing labs. And in the meantime, while this is going on, you have groups like... Uh, Radway, CEO here, uh, basically advocating that we need to have stricter environmental protocols for cannabis testing. In fact, wants to have pharmaceutical grade lab testing standards in, in, in place. And what, what this does basically is it, it continues to make the market more difficult to play in or to be a part of for smaller businesses. There's a, there's a group right now in Michigan of three, four companies that have come together and created their own lobbying group, essentially. Uh, the CEO of Jeff Radway, I, I just mentioned him. I, you guys know what I'm talking about, Green Acres, um, you know, the, the big guy out there. There's a few other ones as well. 
and I've mentioned them before on the podcast, this lobbying group basically is, you know, they're trying to, you know, come out and say, like, they're the industry leaders. They, they know what's best for everyone. Uh, they have the patient's interest in mind. They are the directors of the industry, if you will. And, and then that really isn't the case. They've just self-dubbed themselves this and are trying, really, to make it a big cat game only. So if they can scare people out of, or, or you know, whether it be a politician, a decision maker, scare them into further regulations using things like Iron Labs incident to fuel their conversation. Um, and it's nonsense, absolute nonsense. The, 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 the testing requirements uh, that they have are very, very strict. They're, they're certainly above and beyond what a lot of other consumer products have to go through. And uh, the substance itself is benign. We haven't seen anybody die from this. We haven't seen anyone really get hurt from this uh, in a way that would require this level of industry regulation. The regulation is not for the safety of the consumer. It is for the protection of the investment. All right. Okay. Moving on here. I want to talk about some other things. I wanted to share that with you guys um, because I, I think it continues to show that while we may have a different sort of political climate when it comes to marijuana here in Michigan, certainly with the governor saying, yeah, hemp is a great new product. We want more of it. We got the attorney general standing up for people's rights and patients and caregivers and so on. Um, so that's a wonderful thing. But we also have this backstory of these fat cats, if you will, that are trying to carve out their own industry. And, and in the process of doing so, put up walls so that other people can't participate, so that they can be the only contenders, so that they can ensure a profit and a return on investment for their investors. And, and that's not what this is all about. I'm not concerned with their investors or their profits. I'm concerned with patients and people and compassion. That's what this is all about. So, all right, moving on here, I want to talk about some other things. We had the Michigan Health Department issue out a warning uh, for THC vape carts. And this kind of goes hand in hand with the whole vape ban, which we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Um, but at any rate, yeah, they put out this, uh, let me find it for you so I can read it to you. Health department. Da, 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 da. The department. State Department concerned, don't vape THC, consider not vaping nicotine either. The Michigan Department of Health and Human Services issued updated guidelines or updated guidance to health departments and providers on Friday. And this was put out on, uh, oh, geez, I can't see the date now. I want to see October 12th. So it just came out last week. Um, anyways, yeah. Advising people to refrain from smoking vapes containing THC and consider refraining from vaping nicotine as well. So this is the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services issuing guidance to, as I said, health departments and providers on Friday. Uh, this is the health advisory of the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services sharing with health departments and healthcare providers across the state. And then they go into their details. Um, Individuals should not buy any type of e-cigarette or vaping products, particularly those containing THC, off the street. That's one of their points. Uh, individuals who do not currently use tobacco products should stop, not start using e-cigarette or vaping products. Uh, da, 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 da. All adults who are vaping should not smoke combustible cigarettes as a replacement for nicotine. They put that in there as well. Um, yeah, anyways, you can read the thing. They did include THC, obviously. They're, you know, this is in result to the governor's ban that she put out. Uh, they have put in here also notices that Michigan's death is one of 26 that has occurred nationally. According to the CDC, the CDC has also tracked 1,299 cases of vaping-related lung in injuries, and federal data suggests THC plays a role in the outbreak. 
It says here in Michigan, 35 cases of vaping-related lung injury have been reported since August, according to the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. Of those, 26 individuals, individuals were interviewed and 80% reported vaping with THC-containing products. Um, all right. I don't get into the rest of the article, but that's their notice that they put out. Um, and we talked about this on the podcast before. It's definitely the carts that you need to be careful about, what the carts have inside of them. Uh, we've talked about vitamin E. You can't get it too hot. It becomes a carcinogen. So there's definitely concerns when it comes to vapes. It's not the THC, though, okay? It's not the THC that's hurting you. And there are vape products out there that are perfectly fine to use. Um I guess, you know, and I, that's the thing. I don't think anybody ever said that vaping is perfectly a healthy thing to do. I think people have tried to advocate that it is a healthier alternative to smoking, okay? Not that it's a good thing to do. It's kind of like a light beer or a, a, a Marlboro Light, okay? No, nobody said it's good. It's like Diet Coke. No, the doctor isn't going to tell you, hey, drink six of these a day. It's part of your diet. Hopefully he, a doctor doesn't tell you that, all right? But the idea is, is that it's not as harmful. Maybe still harmful, yes, but not as harmful as the other. It's an alternative, all right? Now, I know that there's probably some products and manufacturers, companies out there that tried to advocate and say that their product was perfectly safe. If they did so, shame on them. That, that's silly, all right? Um, but at any rate, you do need to be concerned. Do you need to take your own health in your own hands and have responsibility for yourself. And if you feel like your lungs are getting, you know, filled up or you've got congestion, it makes you choke, makes you cough, yeah, don't do it again. That's your body telling you that. Listen to it. All right. Anyways, moving on here. Got some other things I wanted to share with you. Let's see here. Oh yeah, six people were arrested just recently for trying to rip off somebody's hemp crop. Um in St. Joseph. Pull this up for you if I can find it again. So those of us that have been in this for a while know that that's a part of the business, if you will. Part of the industry is theft. Unfortunately, it's not any different. And of course, there's going to be more and more of it going on this year. People out there trying to rip off people's crops before they can get them harvested. These knuckleheads, unfortunately, six people tried to rip off someone's hemp crop, got caught with their stolen harvest. And, uh, you know, they're going to they're gonna pay for that. So, let's see if I can find out here any more information on that. At least I hope they pay for it. Here we go. Six arrested at Michigan Hemp Farm. Farmer hit by suspect's car. Oh, even better. Uh, St. Joseph County, according to the news release, farmers working in the field noticed a suspicious vehicle in, in the field, parked in the field. <laughs> yeah, I think that's suspicious. Uh, as farmers approached the vehicle and attempted to make contact, the driver of the vehicle fleed, attempted to flee the scene and ran into one of the farmers in the process. Uh, they were subsequently able to stop the vehicle and upon arrival of deputies, had four subjects detained with a large amount of stolen hemp in their possession. So... All right, that's the story in a nutshell. They'll be charged with felonies, larceny, probably other things as well. So good. Hope they get popped hard. Anyways, moving on here. Let's see. I got one more thing I wanted to share with you guys. And Oh, yeah. Turtle Man, Mitch McConnell. Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. Senate Majority Leader out of Kentucky. He helped get industrial hemp through last year. It's part of the reason we were talking about it today. So on one hand, kudos to Mitch. On the other hand, I still don't like him. All right. Um, he took a trip just this last week to California. It was supposed to be hush hush, but it's in the news, so of course it's not supposed to be hush hush. Anyways, went out to California, toured some with some of the big industry executives out there, checked out the grow places, checked out the dispensaries, got a little tour for himself, had some fun in the sun, if you will. But uh, the reason I'm bringing it up is because it does show that there is change on the horizon. When you have the Senate Majority Leader in the news, talking to industry you know leaders um this he's not a dummy he likes to play dumb in the news but he's not um and this is the same guy who just two weeks ago told the dea hey go come up with a machine that can tell the difference between hemp and cannabis 
even though such a thing doesn't exist. And he told the DEA to do it, who I don't know if the DEA is real good at making machines, but at any rate, that's what he told them to do. And then just this last week, he's in California with cannabis executives. Uh, maybe the DEA called him back and said, what the hell are you talking about, dude? You can't just make stuff up because you want it. I don't know. But at any rate, it shows that our leaders are actually moving in the right direction and change is on the horizon. We know that the Safe Banking Act passed in the House not that long ago. So obviously it's on its way to the Senate and guys like him need to support it. We need his support and uh, whether that be reclassification, Safe Banking Act or some other form, we obviously need to have change directly involving marijuana in this country. Uh, still having it is still, folks, is Schedule 1, okay? And uh, I know most of you guys know exactly what that means, but that means it has no medicinal use at all whatsoever. And this is our entire country now that we're well beyond that as a society in mainstream ideology, and yet our government refuses to recognize it. So... At this point, they're really sort of lame ducking the whole issue, if you will. And uh, hopefully they'll, you know, turtle head pop out of their shell and do something soon enough. So, um, anyways, wanted to share that with you guys. I thought it was good stuff. Maybe we'll see something in the future. Uh, I know Flint continues to putter around as far as uh, their ordinances go. So we'll have to see what's going to happen with that. And um, we have the state hopefully taking applications beginning November 1st for rec licenses. They put out their apps just this last month, so you can check them out on their website if you would like and, uh, you know, look at those. So, anyways, thanks for joining me this week. I definitely appreciate being with you guys. Don't forget about our trunk or treat or our party on Halloween or the soup kitchen or just all the good things we have down there. If you guys haven't seen the pumpkin spice stuff, we got it going on at the Growing Concern. Uh, if you haven't tried out the French toast, dude, it's so good. Okay, it is unreal, and I got a hankering every year. You know, about this time, you got to go to the cider mill and get those fresh cinnamon sugared donuts, right? And this year was no exception. All right, I just got to do it. But the French toast at the Growing Concern, honestly, it's pretty much spoiled me, okay, because it comes out real fresh, like still melting in your mouth fresh. And not only does it have cinnamon sugar, all right, I'm starting to drool as I talk about this, but it's got frosting drizzle, it's got maple syrup that goes with it, um, and like I said, it's piping hot, fresh out of the kitchen. So if you guys haven't had it yet, please indulge. It's absolutely amazing, and be ready to just chill after you down that thing because it's going to be a serious state of... Uh, digestive meditation. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining me this week. I appreciate you guys. John, thanks for making it out in the rain and making this happen here at All Points TV. You guys, if you have time, check out their other podcasts. Definitely appreciate it. Spread the word. All is good. Love you. Get down to the G. We want to see you there. All right. Peace and love. See you.